Jason Starbuck here with Starbuck on the Move with Homalo Mahal. What's up? Good to meet you, brother. My pleasure. Um, it's been a pleasure just coming here into your school. You've uh, treated us very well. Um, it was really cool to walk in here and see Raleigh Oestima yep. <laughs> a few minutes ago. Um, one of the uh, things that we talk about is sometimes challenges in life and um, we were here listening to some of your stuff and we were talking a little bit um, and one of the questions that I was interested in is uh, you started at a very young age. At what age did you start martial arts? Uh, martial arts I started when I was five years old. <laughs> very young. And where at? Where, where were you? Uh, where's uh, my town in Brazil? They call Diamantina. Okay. Diamantina is me Diamond City. People found a lot of diamonds there by, back in the day, you know, like the slaves. And then even like maybe like 20 years ago, you know, my dad used to work with diamonds as well. So that's uh, my hometown in Brazil. And what brought you into martial arts? I mean, what was it? I think it was uh, pretty much like a, when the mom bring a kid for the first time, you know, like, I, man, I used to watch like this. You know, like this channel on TV when they superheroes they fight, and then I used to fight all the time in my house with my brother. You know, and then I have a lot. I had a lot of energy when I was a kid. You know, so my mom, I need to take some of this guy, this little guy. You know, she took me to, you know, I used to play soccer, swim, taekwondo. You know, I used to do everything. So, sure. but you know, like honestly, on the taekwondo, I really like. You know, I really have a connection with that martial arts stuff. You know, that discipline. I think because I didn't have discipline, and then they gave me discipline. So. That was pretty much how I'm like, okay, that's I like more. And then also, my parents never pushed me to do it. Uh. They pushed more like to study and then play yeah. soccer. And then it was like, oh, let's take him to this. Oh, drop me off. Bye bye. Pick you up later. You know, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much the way it was. So I was doing my own. I think, you know, made me like more and then, you know, like be more focused on that. Yeah, I actually had started um, when I was about seven years old. Um, it was kind of the same mentality. I couldn't really focus on anything else. But when I got into the gym, it's really funny. I, I would go out and go to these different gyms over the last years and I feel at home anywhere I go, you know? Um, and so I started at about seven years old um, and then got what we would call a junior black belt. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think it was in, because it's karate or so, you don't see black belts really moving forward. They kind of don't stay. Uh, the question that I always have is like, you kept going, you know, You're like I kind of stopped when I was like 11 and then picked up years later, but you kept going. What do you think was inside of you that just drove you to keep going? You know, I think one first reason of like, for example, the karate, the taekwondo, I have the same thing and I got junior black belt as well, is because you move up so quick, you know, like you get disciplined and they teach you everything, you know, teach you techniques, but you know, like you just one thing that we have and then that's different and then you can't get a black belt if you're not like a, if you like a teenage or kid, you know? So that make a lot of sense for me, why people like, you know, like you see like a 16 years old kids, they train since they five and then they blue belt, mm -hmm. you know, like because they can't pass on the point of blue belt. Mm -hmm. They just stay there, you know, like, you know, so, and then in, you know, like I know karate, taekwondo, I respect all martial arts, you know, like I love martial arts, judo, everything. And then you learn, you know, like you learn the forms, you learn like the fight, you get a little bit speed on your things. Just think about jujitsu. Yeah. Jujitsu, you never learn everything. When you think that, oh, this guy can't escape on this choke, and then they came up with defense. And then when you think like, I get the technique down, this guy, I hold the guy, he can't escape, and then somebody develop a escape. Jujitsu is like a computer. You know, like every time is a new thing. Oh, this computer here you buy today, next week is something way more like a, you know, better. Jiu-Jitsu is the same. Every year something come up new. It's kind of like a, you buy a, every, every year you buy a new car. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe every month. You know what I mean? Yeah. So never get old, you know, so you don't get born. When you get born and then somebody come out with a new, man, it's crazy. You, you don't get born. It's, it's, it's a process of evolution. Sure. So it never stops you, you know, get more evolution, evolution, evolution. So you never get born. You can't stop training. You can't stop even think about it. Like just to have this conversation with you, I'm thinking about some moves, you know what I mean? So it's crazy. <laughs> it, and that kind of leads into something. Um, and you know, after traveling the world um, and being around mostly East Asia and things like that, um, you get to see many different religions. Um, one thing that I found, um, I think in martial arts uh, as a whole it has this, but something that, and maybe it's something that was back then when it was kind of karate or Japanese and those type of things, it had that. But I think that we kind of missed that for a while and I've been, so intrigued lately um, there's almost a religion behind jiu-jitsu 
Yeah, you know, like, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, it is, but I'd probably is, you know. And not so much as, like, a religion, but it's, there's a, there's such a passion and there's yeah, a I drive. Think, what is it you I think combines yeah, I, that? I think passion, you know, like, I think, um, I don't know, religion, but, you know, passion for sure, you know. I, I think people get passionate because of those things that I was mentioning, you know. Like, uh, you know, like, you can't, it's so crazy that, you know, like, just think about, you can't start training jujitsu today, and then you can't create your own game. Mm. You know, I teach you some stuff and then you start to create, you develop your own thing, your own style. Think about that, how many, how many, how many things that you can do there? Imagine if you start to work in something that, you know, it's new for you and then you're 50 years old. What are you gonna learn at 50 years old to work in something, you know? Think about if you go in the college at 50 years old. It's just few people. How many people 50 years old, they start to train Jiu-Jitsu and then they actually they get black belt in Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. They develop a game, they learn. And then, you know, like, uh, they actually can do it, yeah. you know what I mean? I think those things, they give you so much passion, you know, like, uh, you know, like, this is my move. I do this to anyone, you know, like, you know what I mean? So you have everything set. I think that's a, I think that gives you so much passion. And then the lifestyle, everybody's friendly. Like yeah, you said, you walk no. in the gym, everybody's friendly. Everybody wants to Every hang gym out. I come to, they're just like this. Hey, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that mentality that we have, you know. We don't have the mentality that someone walk in the gym and then we have a mean face, you know, look at you. It doesn't matter which academy if you come from. You know, they can come here, my big rival, if you walk here, I'm gonna be like, probably my big rival with someone that I'm a big fan. So they're gonna come here, I'm gonna be in shock, you know? Yeah. I was like, you wanna train, you wanna do something? You're gonna go with, you know, it's, it's not like a something that, you know, like, uh, and then probably maybe I'm gonna fight the guy next week, you know? Yeah. So, because we have the same passion, you know? So we become close, become family. It doesn't matter what team, whatever it is, you know? Now, Jiu Jitsu has taken you all over the world. Yep. Um, and it's uh, four-time world champion. Yeah, four-time world, world champion as a black belt. And ADCC, ADCC champion. champ as well. Okay. Um, the road to that um, is glorious. Um, at, at, always at the end, it's always there. What was, um, if maybe we could share what, maybe some of those struggles of getting there that you had to go through to then get to the victory? Because I think that we need that as people to know the stories of those that struggle because it's pretty amazing. You know, like, I think this is part of the journey, you know, like, uh, uh, the, you know, like, uh, the doubts that you have in your mind, the struggle that you have, that's actually what makes you a champion, you know, like, uh, if, if you, everything goes smooth, I don't, I, I honestly, personally, I don't like things go smooth, like, if everything goes smooth, too smooth, it's because I'm in my comfort zone, mm. I don't like, it. something needs to be not right, you know, like, I need to go in the tournament, like, one week before, is something need to be not feeling right. You know, I need to have like a something, maybe if I go travel, maybe I don't have my ticket yet, you know, maybe, I, you know, like maybe my sponsor didn't send me my hot, I don't know, I mean, I need to have something to prove that I need to, you know, like get out of the, the comfort zone, like a struggle and then get there and then perform in my best way and then win. A struggle, it's part of champion's life. Champions that don't have a struggle, they have no histories. They have no memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need yeah. to have a struggle, you need to get hurt. Like I got hurt in Abu Dhabi in April. I hurt I tore my hamstring. Cut off like this. Poof. Like a, how many people would say that I'm gonna compete on the world? You know how long I train I trained two weeks to compete on the world. Two weeks only. I was trained so hard. I went in Abu Dhabi to compete Abu Dhabi Pro. You know, like my legs was tight. Like I feel my muscles tight because I was overtraining. Because I wanted so bad. And then I got injury. And then after that, people was like, the doctor wants to do surgery on my hamstring. I went to the doctor, two doctors said. I said, you know what, this guy's crazy. You know, I took my idea, like my read, my, my, my research sure. of like, what should I do with this? And then the research was like, now they do surgery, but 20 years ago, they used to not do surgery on the hamstring. Yeah. So I might as well not do surgery. If the 20 years ago they don't do, why they do now? That's you know what I mean? <laughs> so I stick with the game, you know, like I did a lot of physical therapy and then I went there and then I won the awards. You know, like uh, that's how I train. One week, two, one week, two weeks before the awards, one week I drill with my guys and then I'm like, oh man, I can't drill now. Okay. And then the week before the awards I roll. I'm like, I can't fight. But I was so confident because the train is not like a two months. Mm. It's a life preparation. Yes. It's a life train. I'm not training for like a six months for the world. I train for like a 20 years oh, for competing yeah. the ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't do tra train camp. That is not as this year. Train, oh, there's a train camp for this tournament. No. A train camp starts on 
January 1st, and then it's finished on it December at five 21st. Years old. You know, exactly. <laughs> you know, so that gave me this mentality. Of yeah. course, you know, you need to, I wish I could train more, you know, like to the tournament, but I didn't, but I have the same mindset. You know, like my training was my physical therapy. Okay. You know, like my mind, my watching videos, my desire. Yeah. That was my training for the was this last year. Um, something that I've noticed in success and um, struggling to do whatever that is, um, we, uh, I found that there's certain people that think differently. And um, just even speaking with you, you, you speak like a champion. If you could share what that mental brain is, it would probably inspire a lot of people that they got to think differently, I think. It's, it, you can't have that same mentality. What, what is it you think that's in your mind that is different? I think, you know, like, that's uh, probably I learned with the martial arts, you know, like, with the desire, you know, like, the desire to no matter what accomplish your goals. You know, like, uh, I can give you an example. My dad, like, uh, two years ago, he had a depression, you know, like, uh, I went to my house, he was, like, skinny, you know, like, I couldn't understand what was depression. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand that he had no desire to eat no desire to get out the bed and then stand up and then go do something. Mm. I could understand that. You know, in my mindset, I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know why you're doing that. Are you sick? No, you do blood tests, you do all kinds of tests, you're not sick and then you have a depression. There's a mind problem. Uh, yeah. I couldn't understand that, you know, sure. like uh, in my idea, you know, like, uh, I don't know, I'm talking about today, you know, like I have so much conversation with him, like Skype, you know, like stuff like that. You know, like every time it was my same. I'm like, are you still on the bed? You still not want to eat? Come on, sure. you got to do something. You know, like, and then I honestly, I said, he doesn't have the mindset. He never going to get better. Mm -hmm. I thought my dad was going to die with depression. Mm. But actually, so much talk, so much. He's like, I think you're probably like, man, this guy's telling me this every day. I might, you know, change my, you know, my, because man, it's a mind. It's a mind game, you know, for everything. Nobody. Not your wife, not your mom, not your, not your daughter, nobody. It's you and you. you know, that's why competition sometimes, you know, people say, if I beat myself, I can beat anyone. That's true. Sometimes you have so much doubts that you can beat no one. You know, you're losing to yourself. You know what I mean? So I think that's the mentality of people, they do sport. I don't think it's only me, you know, like because I won tournaments, but I think people, they do sport, people who do jiu-jitsu. I, I, you know, like I grew up watching like a race driver, like I don't know if you guys heard about this guy. He has the same mindset. Michael Jordan has the same mindset. The best, best athletes have the same mindset. I don't know if normal people have the same mindset. Yeah. Like a people, they don't sure. live this life. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I know they have people that have a strong mind. They do know the things, you know, but I grew up on the sport, so I don't know about all this stuff. Well, you've changed a lot of people's lives and your passion, and it shows. And, you know, as um, I've interviewed a lot of different people, um, and I can't tell you that enough that when I interview anybody in jiu-jitsu or martial arts, it, there's never a sense of, I want to finish. It's just, it's such a passion. They want to share. And so I appreciate your time. Thank I you. I really do. Thank you. It My is pleasure. a pleasure and an Thank honor. You. Thank you, guys. Starbuck on the move. Oh, no problem. Thank you, guys.